Barcelona or London can see me right now. Yep. I wonder if they're watching right now. I guess that's, if you're watching, tweet me. Tweet me something and make my phone go vibrate. Uh, they got about a 60 second delay, so. 60 second delay, okay, so I'm waiting on it, come on. So you can bleep things out, right? very best to not be distracted by it. Um, I'm ready to start whenever you are. You, you can go right ahead. All right, uh, let's go ahead and do that in three, two, one. Hi everybody, I'm Zan, uh, Zantronics, it's not my real name, Zan, Zan is a Tronics, that's my stage name, I do that because, I don't know, I need to have some bigger than life persona in order to drive home the idea that the software that I'm cranking out is worthy enough to give this sort of 50 minute presentation on. Anyway, this is about file systems in pure Perl. I've written a module called FileSys Pro 6. Uh, as the abstract says, it is a real in-memory file system written entirely in Perl. No excess whatsoever. Um, that's an excellent tiny little snapshot telling you what you can do with this thing. I want to, before I go any further, I want to get the crowd properly enthused. Uh, I know a lot of you have already heard me threaten to do this, but I'm serious about this this time. I'm going to get us to say enthusiasm, enthusiasm, enthusiasm as, as loud as we can. Okay, so uh, do it with me. Stand up. Stand up and let's do this. All right, so enthusiasm, enthusiasm, enthusiasm.
because files is virtual. That's already taken. And, you know, that's nothing's happening with that. It's just some interface sitting around on CPAN taking out dead bits and bytes. Ah, yes. Hello, Amy. Hello. Every file system also has its own path hierarchy, its own file system capabilities, uh, meaning that you can implement, or sorry, you can import uh, external modules that allow you to, say, have a uh, tar implementation, or extra functions that let you arbitrarily map files from your real file system into a virtual file system. Piecemeal. You can set any permissions and ownerships that you want. Now, why does this matter? Why why does this matter if you're you know already god of this file system in your isolated parole process? And well, that'll become apparent very shortly. You can mount parts of the real file system into any of your pay points. So, for example, you can do this. You can create a mount point. You can instantiate a file system device. File system because it's real is actually a uh, file system device, as it were. And the path argument, that's just an argument telling, hey, um, this is where the, we should import data from the real file system, uh, this, that, and the other. And we're mounting it to slash mount. It works as you would expect. As I mentioned earlier, you can map individual files from the real file system into a fake one. Using the file system extensions module, for instance, I'm creating the Etsy directory and I just, without instantiating a whole new file system it's real object, I can simply map the Etsy password file directly into Etsy password in my fake file system. And who fits there? Any changes that happen to Etsy password on the real file system, since it's a, just a regular file, they're immediately reflected in the file system object. And I can generate tarballs from these. That, of course, I mentioned that being the the reason this whole thing exists. And that's very easy to do. It works again like you would hope. You, except I do have to have a, a small abstraction around I/O handles. I'll get into that uh, much later after my first section of this talk. Um, file system it's I/O handle. I need to abstract that to wrap standard output and. I'm tarring up the slash food slash bar directories, and it just outputs that to standard output until there's nothing left. I can also make snapshots of any part of the file system. I can make snapshots of snapshots. So, here's me creating a snapshot directory. Here's me mounting a part of the Mounting a snapshot of the snapshot directory um, onto itself from the, uh, using the root file system uh, as the basis of it. Uh, the root file system, the files is POSIX, of course. And I can make multiple successive snapshots of the same location in the file system. So I can basically repeat what I just did multiple times over. And whenever I do this, whenever I touch that initial uh, foo file, that's only present in the uppermost layer of the uh, snapshotted file system. Whenever I touch bar, if I were to unmount snapshot one time, bar would no longer be present, but who would be there? Kind of weird, but kind of cool. It speaks for itself. If I mount unmount snapshot twice, both who and bar disappear. Oh, and I've also implemented a thing called file sysposix user line find, which the tar implementation is written in terms of. That allows me to perform a file find style depth first recursion of the data structure inside of my file sysposix objects. Um, I'll go into a little detail in a moment uh, about the paths that I'm receiving. You notice that I'm calling the full method on the path object, and I do that because I like to deal with uh, paths as uh, blessed arrays that uh, contain their notable low-level representation. 
a lot of features of a Unix user land are available in file sysposics, such as umask. You can set a umask for uh, that's used to derive the de default permissions of new files that you create. There's stat. It works and returns the same sort of my notes that I showed you earlier. Make path. It works just like make path and file path. And you can even perform operations on file descriptors that you open or created files for. FCH1 and FCH0, they work as you would expect. And of course, I needed some concept of current working directories. So chdir does what you would expect. I have my notes. As I keep intimating, I have no points. They are very much implemented in the style of a Unix VFS uh, kernel implementation of no points. Uh, I have directory entries that work an awfully lot like VFS, kernel VFS directory entries. And the paths, path resolution semantics. I want to create links to ensure that they're as similar as possible in every little niggling way, especially uh, with regards to assembly resolution and whatnot. Uh, two file systems inside inside the you know, any, any Unix user land. I provide different types of file systems that all hopefully provide the same semantics. I'm going to go over a couple of uh, file system types that file sysposix already ships. Now, all of this stuff is nice. Uh, what can we do with it? I haven't gotten around to doing this yet because I've been extremely lazy and completely distracted by another project outside of the Perl community. This is actually more of a vision quest of mine. I'm going to get into that later. You can write a fuse module wrapper um, using the very nice module on, uh, on Medicine Pan. It's just called fuse, all uppercase, to consume directly a file sysposix object. And all of, the, all of the calls would map very cleanly between fuse and file sysposix. Make your own reverse prop model system if you want it. What does reverse mean in this context? <laughs> <laughs> I just, Why is that funny? It's because not, proc is already perverse. I, I don't consider proc to be perverse, and I, I don't consider. I, I'm just using flowery language to get people into the spirit of acneism. I just don't understand what you mean. What do you mean? Well, basically, within a file, you can make a file system whose files are backed instead of by physical files in, on your real file system or in memory or otherwise, you can make file systems that, are, that have files that are backed by code. You can serve the same content, for instance, if you were to write a, a web app or HTTP server wrapper around this. You can save the same, serve the same content from your real file system, but provide different views and representations of it programmatically if you're to implement your own file system type on top of file sysposics. Do anything, really. As I said earlier, uh, cPanel uses file sysposics to help us get as many customers from competing control panel products as possible. And one of the, one of the reasons that I started it was to solve a very critical performance issue. It's not a performance issue on cPanel servers, per se more than it was a performance issue of trying to get the accounts off of customers existing non cPanel machines as quickly and as in a resource kind of manner as possible. We wanted to pre prevent and obviate the need to perform disk data duplication as much as possible by providing interesting ways of manipulating the data on the file system without actually touching it on the real file system. And hey, people are very excited to move away from our products. A lot of people complained that, oh, it shouldn't take 12 hours to migrate this one account. Well, with file sysposics, I cut that time down to four hours for a very large 60 gigabyte account, for instance. And of course, we couldn't degrade the performance of your old infrastructure while we're doing this, so we needed to mitigate any and all file system operations as much as possible during these migrations. So any time, any opportunity that I could use file sysposix to obviate the need to write to disk, I'm going to take it. 
Where's the real power of file system pausing as he can seize it? You can aggressively avoid disk usage and data duplication, modify data in place without altering the original copy, generate account backups from non cPanel machines on our own native format in situ on the server itself. Here's some things you might appreciate about file system POSIX if you're looking to use this in whatever project you happen to have in mind. It's written in pure Perl, no non-core runtime dependencies. I do have uh, various test time dependencies, uh, just test no warnings, test exception, nothing terribly crazy. Works fine in Perl 5.8, reason being that is a that happens to be the only Perl that ships on a lot of a lot of the machines we're migrating our customers away from. Can't really do much about that, so code against Perl 5.8. It's extensible, very extensible. There are some very notable limitations which make me sad. However, I wouldn't be a very good presenter if I didn't tell you about them. File says POSIX does not do a very good job of handling changes that happen in the real file system and reflecting them into the file system POSIX object. Namely, I'm talking about directory structures. File contents, no operating uh, no specific operations need to be done to make sure file contents are carried over from the real file system into the file system POSIX one because the data is shuttled quite literally from the disk straight to the consumer file system POSIX. Directory structures, on the other hand, that's going to require something like iNotify in Linux. Uh, it's a facility that the kernel provides to notify you of any iNode updates. Uh, to a user space statement on the fly. Getting to that point, I can't ship that on cPanel, uh, cPanel machines or the machines that we're migrating customers away from because, again, I need to, I need to have all of this in pure curl. I can't be shipping random binaries to our non cPanel customer machines. Yes? So, but when, when file says POSIX gets a request, right? Mm -hmm. um, like, before it throws an error, for example, say, oh, the file doesn't exist, if you go and check to see if the director No, there's uh, nothing to misunderstand here. It's just not something that's implemented at this time. Um, so basically, the error just happens. However, you can catch it, and this is probably something I'm going to do in future versions, and that's an actually a very good approach. So for, for instance, if file says POSIX throws an eno int, or enodur, for instance, I can, after that, re-index the directory structure that I'm consulting from, and stuff it back in the file system as appropriate. Yes? What, what is it, I mean, you're going to be explaining this in the upcoming slides, but what, what is it that makes this so much faster? Like, you haven't said anything that made me think that it would run twice as fast as just using the regular file system. I would think the file system would have caching as, you know, on its own, that would also keep things from being this lots of time. That's not the concern that I am trying to address with file system POSIX, but rather, Whenever I'm transforming customer data from non cPanel accounts, it's always going to be in various different places, in various different formats. And I have to convert that as efficiently as possible to the native cPanel format. And trying to avoid copying the entirety of the data into a temporary staging directory and then turning that out is something file says POSIX is very good at obviating. I hope that answers your question. Um, oh, for this application, that doesn't matter if it, um, if it, if you're not expecting the directory structure to change, so there's no point in looking to see if it did, right? Right, in this case, uh, whenever we're migrating accounts from non cPanel machines, we typically lock the entire account structure before we migrate it away. I'm going to show you an example. Yeah, so what, I'm not sure that the answer to my question, but hopefully. It obviates the need to copy everything before you start renaming. Correct. And uh, if you want to talk more about this later, I'd be happy to answer. No worries. And of course, as I just mentioned to you guys, unless you lock a real directory, you take a snapshot out of file system state, and the file system might become inconsistent. And of course, the entirety of the file system structure 
existent memory in the curl process at all times. If you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of inodes, directories, files, whatever, you're going to exhaust your memory at some point, if, especially if you're running on a small server uh, that has maybe 256 megs of RAM, a VPS, or what have you. Now, I do have some plans for the future. I would like to be able to get 566 VFS to sanely manage an inode cache. And I want this inode cache to live on a disk so that I don't have to run into the possibility of exhausting all the server's memory. I want to implement support for reading and writing to and from permanent block file systems through file posix. I want to port something akin to TIMFFS to file posix and gaming pure from. So, do you guys have any questions so far? And you want to... Um, well, I was going to say, another issue we need to say is that it's, it's volatile. It's running for four hours, and something happens, you've lost everything, and you lose, you lose your you're not bringing stuff to this. So it might be to run faster, but you know, something goes wrong with the process, you've lost everything, you have to start over again, right? Yeah, that's a, and that's going to be a concern that'll happen if you're just creating a tarball from the thing that, from the, mic, from the account that you're migrating from in the first place. So, we try to mitigate that as much as possible like by locking the account. And if anything happens to the system, well, of course you're going to have to start over again. Another question. So, sure. if you're part of a real file system through there, and the contents of the files are just piped through, and all the metadata associated with those files is. The metadata is preserved as well. Okay, so if, if there's a change, if you make a change in your fake file system, mm -hmm. and there, there's also a change in the real file system, mm -hmm. how do you deal with a conflicting? Whenever you make a change in the fake file system, I didn't mean to talk over you, um, but I imagine this is uh, going to answer your question. If it's a change to an inode in the fake file system that maps to an inode in the real file system, then permissions. Uh, M times, C times, A times, those all get carried over. Okay. So you, the, the changes pass in both directions? Yes. Uh, so, yes? Uh, you mentioned the snapshot, and you can layer multiple, multiple snapshots on top of each other. Is there any way to know how many snapshots you have at a given time? If you've got you know, an out of control loop or some other crazy situation where you don't know how many times you snapshot a given directory, how many times you have to unbound it to get back to where you started? Ah, yes. I'm uh, actually trying to find the pod for this. I don't think I've installed everything on my laptop. However, there's a function uh, that's available in FileSys POSIX called MountList that returns a list of all the file system objects currently mounted or rather of all of the device objects mounted in your file system structure. And, and so you see the multiple mounts in there. Right. And you say, okay, these four look like the snapshots I'm looking for, the probably four snapshots. Right, right. And we have a question back here. I'm oh, sorry, I thought, you, I thought you had a question, but you're grabbing my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, hopefully to address some of your concerns regarding the necessity of this Run a quick demo. So real quick, I'm going to show you the directory, the source directory from the real file system that I just tarred off. So basically, I have just a few things, demo scripts, the tarball that I just created, I should probably remove that, a very small, very simple directory hierarchy, and an image of right side drive.
helps if I actually specify data for my script process. Let me show you that script real quick so that you understand what just happened. So I went from this structure, passing only in, passing in only the data in my current directory, to this. Now, do you guys have any questions before I move on? I feel like I lost one right here. Where did you start, and what what was the result here? So basically, I started by running my demo script against. Okay, so were you just showing us an LS? Okay. Yes. In demo. Yeah, I'm in demo, and I was running the demo script against the demo directory itself. Okay. Oh, and so we created this mount and. directory that I passed in the first argument of the script to slash mount slash real. 
open. What's the argument in this case? It's the actual path to the original. Right, the argument in this case is dot, dot. Okay. it's just dot concurrent, yeah. So I'm mounting the current directory on the slash mount slash real. Mm -hmm. The result you can see, you can see here, everything should resemble, actually, I wanna make sure the output looks very similar, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And you can see how everything in mount, uh, mount real looks basically like this. Yep. And then and you then can turn it out over the network. Uh, yeah, then it's going over the network. 
And the contents of the files aren't necessarily cached in memory. Um, it's actually just the inodes and directory structure that's cached in memory. I hope that makes uh, some sort of sense. Right, so you're, right. so instead of building the file, instead of building the directory you want to fire off, mm -hmm. all your file system itself, where you said you have to copy it twice, mm -hmm. it could be very expensive in your case. You're right. doing it all in RAM and then dumping it off. Okay. Right, and, and of course I'm not copying it. the entire 60 gigs from the source server into RAM. It, it's just being shoved through very interesting manipulations through files as POSIX to the CPM machine that we're restoring that account from. So the contents of the files are different. It's only the items, right? The contents it's, not the files. Even, it's not even all the items. It's a description of where the items are and you need to stat them. Right. Secure. And the time at which we get the stat, the uh, stat buffer information is whenever we traverse the directories. And that's happening whenever we're firing up the directory structure. So whenever you're mounting a portion of the real file system into file system POSIX, you're not immediately indexing the entire hierarchy. You're simply making it available. It's just any time you open a directory or a file, then that data is statted or read with read here and so on and so forth. Is there any option for output other than as R files? Like, I mean, one thing you could do is like make it, you know, back to the fuse file system when you haven't done that. Right. Is there anything else you can do with it other than produce R files? Uh, right now, this is this is all that that it ships because this right. is something that I've written for work, and we haven't had we haven't encountered that use case for ourselves yet. However, in the very near future, we're very much considering writing a rsync front end to Files POSIX so that you can rsync yes. things from a weird directory which, structure. Which, which side of the rsync are you looking at? Like the rsync thing? Uh, yes. <laughs> or, or it could, um, so you can rc things out of the file system POSIX structure. Or you can just leave it run as a name and reach in and pluck out the bits you want. Instead of turning it our file, if you deliver it to S3 or something. Exactly. Uh -huh. So, uh, would you like for me to go through the remaining examples of where I can mount files and create files, so on and so forth, or do you get the nub of it by now? You can't pull stuff, show it off. <laughs> well, all right. In that case, um, <laughs> the same company. <laughs> so inside of the inside of the snapshot uh, mount snapshot directory, I'm going to create some file. And then I'm going to create the Etsy directory. I'm going to map Etsy password and choose the mount snapshot Etsy directory. And I'm going to create a few more files and change some permissions. Then I'm going to remove. Exactly. What would the difference be between doing um, a map of a password onto some path and doing a copy of password onto that, that same path? Uh, it can be the same thing. If you're doing a copy of Etsy password, then you're just creating a copy. Any changes that happen on the okay. original Etsy password aren't going to get carried over. Okay. However, anything, any File content or metadata is going to be carried over. So I guess the real difference is that with map, the copy is done at the time the R file is constructed. Right. Okay. And the copy is done literally at the time the contents right. of the file are being read. And it's not even really copies, it's just it goes and reads the thing that's over there. So yeah. The thing that's right. Right. Uh, so do you guys have any further questions before I move on to some of the nitty gritty? Details of how you might implement your own file system, please. What's, what's the question mark on that? I, okay. I had a similar need at work for the tar page, mm -hmm. and I solved it, and I was lazy. And I didn't get around to putting it on CPM. And I think the first CPM stuff for your tar stuff was uploaded by you, and I felt really bad that I hadn't gotten around to putting my stuff on CPM. But this is way cooler, so now I don't feel bad. <laughs> I don't feel bad. You should never feel bad for writing code in the first place. Never feel bad. Don't listen to anybody who's trying to make you feel bad. When, when you find that someone else got there first, and then you discover actually that thing is better, so you like didn't actually miss an opportunity there, that's, I don't know. Well, that's just, that's just a, one way of looking at the class half full, which I, which I appreciate. So. One more thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm not Steve Jobs. I'm not even remotely like him. That's probably a good thing. 
Assembly still gets involved. Yes. You guys must understand yeah. how to implement new file system types, or else. Okay, that's. I, I don't actually intend to forcibly enforce this moral imperative on you, but hopefully this portion of my talk will give you some better information as to how to use file system POSIX beyond what's provided out of the box. First, let's take a look at some of the documentation that I've written for the interfaces that my file system POSIX real and file system POSIX min uh, file system types implement. The directory is actually slightly more important and weird than the inode itself. Uh, the reason being, there's just a lot more functionality that I have to express because of the crazy ways in which, <coughs> bless you, in which uh, file system contents can be made available to the user. So, uh, the directory object interface is very simple. It provides, you need to provide in your implementation a thing to get a an, an IO from the current directory by name, and that's not the full you know, the full path, that's just the name of the item in that directory. You can also set an IO to be present by that by any given name, uh, any given IO object from anywhere in the current directory. Is that how symlinks and hardlinks are implemented internally? You just go grab the directory from somewhere else and set it inside that one and call it good? Uh, symlinks are implemented by uh, the very same me mechanism in which symlinks are implemented on plain Unix. Okay, so it, it's just a file that has a mode, uh, or rather than a mode, but the S uh, I F N T portion of the. But that would be a mode for hard links. Then? Hard links, I haven't gotten around to expressing. Okay. Because they're nasty. They're nasty. Uh, I like hard links on real file systems, but in order to pull up a hard link here, we would basically need to make available the same inode uh, object in multiple places. And so there's, really, you end up running into the same limitations of inodes, uh, oh, sorry, uh, hard links that you would on a real file system, you know, trying to figure out which one was the original. Uh, I have a test for, okay, does this, does a child item in my directory exist by this name? You can also detach an inode by name from the current directory and you can delete it entirely. Detach is important because that allows you to remove an item from your file system without removing it from the underlying file system, just in case you want to be able, this is actually how a snapshot is implemented. If you remove anything from a snapshot, it doesn't get removed from the underlying structure, but if I were to use delete, then that would have happened, and that would have made a very good snapshot file system. And of course, you have to provide the facilities for performing sequential access to your directories. So you can get a directory handle, you can rewind, read for the next item in the directory, it just returns my notes. You can close the directory, you can also rename a member in your directory from one thing to another. And then of course, you can also get the contents of your directory by list, and you can also count the number of items in your directory and tell whether or not that directory is empty. Again, this is an inter interface that you must implement. As long as you do that, then you can make your fake file system too. Okay, what about the inodes? So I only have five minutes, or less than that, so I'm gonna try to go through this one rather quickly. First off, you have to have a method of updating the inode based on uh, the information that you would get from a plain curl stack call. Uh, basically, all the positional arguments uh, between from plain curl stack and what inode expects in inode update are the same. You need to have a method to open an inode and interpret the flags uh, as appropriate in case you want to make any modifications. You need to implement CH own, symlink, relink, CH mod, and child. Child is actually where file says POSIX and POSIX BFS is in actual kernels. Uh, this is where it differs because I know child is how you create a child node of a directory. So you create a new iNode with a given name, with a given mode, and that's that. 
there's actually a separate optional call called attach that lets you attach any random inode to any random location in the file system. But this is unique to this is unique to the interface that needs to be implemented for all file system types that file system POSIX would expect you to use. So very quickly, um, I'm going to skip over to the portion about uh, file handles. As I mentioned earlier, file system IO handle is how your abstract access to files or to the visible contents of any given IO. As long as you're able to write, print, sprint, read, seek, tell, and close, then you're good as gold. Now, I know in my abstract that I intimated upon the fact that I would talk about Perl I.O. integration, and I've since decided that's not appropriate. I don't think putting Perl I.O. functionality into files as POSIX is the right thing to do because Perl I.O. is meant for transforming streams of data into another format. File says POSIX is just a repository for reading or saving the data, no matter its representation. Now, Perl.io, honestly, is probably not going to be implemented in File says POSIX at all. However, I do want to make sure that File says POSIX IO handle is as compatible with plain Perl IO handle as possible. And how much time do I have left? Two minutes? Okay. Um, now, so the reason why I've been so lazy is recently I stumbled upon Tickle's VFS. Tickle has a very interesting VFS that it is baked into core language. You don't have to notify any of your code that it's using any anything that's not from the real file system. It just works. It's baked in. It's everywhere. You can mount a tarball. You can mount an HTTP service, an FTP service, anywhere. And your typical program won't know the difference. And this is something that I hate. I hate that files as POSIX can't do it. Typical, it's VFS is my worst enemy. Now it's my dearest friend. Because I gotta do this, I gotta do this. And when I was researching everything I needed to do to do this, I ended up accidentally creating a new typical web framework called Tanzer. It's available at tanzer.io, by the way, and the, the thing of things, the reason why I'm a little less prepared for today's talk than I would have been otherwise is people are finally, are suddenly giving a talk about this web server framework that I produced less than two months ago at the Temple Conference on Monday. So I've been a little distracted, and now Tanzer is becoming the de facto Temple web framework. I don't know how that happened. Sorry guys, I meant to provide more file system y stuff for you. Things happen. The aristocrats! So I'm still hammering up the marketing stuff, but if you really want to check out Tanzer, it's on Tanzer.io. I have a I have logos commission for it and everything. Um, if any of you guys want to help me develop file system posits, I have a GitHub account. Please uh, don't hesitate to message me on Twitter. GitHub or whatever, if you have any interesting ideas, then let me know. Do you guys have any final questions and answers?
Okay, you're fine. I just need to get. I just need to be able to get in and out. <clears throat> Yeah, okay. And so, 